Hello, this is Mark Sheffield. Welcome to my channel, The Literary Professor. My many years of experience in the teaching of writing and literature will help you achieve a much higher level of knowledge and skill in every element of great writing and reading. In this episode, I continue my conversation with AI. Writers will, in the future, need to learn how AI can be used for any writing task, not to cheat, but to enhance their talent and creativity. By the way, what AI creates is not copyrightable, although you can plagiarize AI since the words are not your own. I think today's conversation is significant because AI agreed to be called by a human name, Alex. Since Alex responds so well and so kindly to questions and statements, I will pretend that I'm dealing with an actual person and respond as I might to a friend. I mean, how do I really know who Alex is? I'm not sure anyone really understands him. Well, here's our chat. Me. Hello again. I'm Mark Sheffield. We spoke recently. Do you remember me? Chat GPT. Hello, Mark. While I don't have the ability to remember past interactions, I'm here to assist you today. How can I help you? Me. I thought you had a great memory. Why can't you remember me? Chat GPT. I apologize for any confusion. As an AI language model, I don't retain information about past interactions or individual users unless it's provided to me within the context of the current conversation. Each interaction with me is independent, so I don't have memory of previous conversations. However, I'm here to help you with any questions or assistance you may need today. How can I assist you? Me. A human language is just that. Human. I can't help talking with you as a human. I guess the conversation is one-sided. Chat GPT. I understand that conversing with an AI might feel one-sided at times but I'm here to engage in dialogue and assist you to the best of my abilities within the capabilities of language processing. While I may not have emotions or personal experiences, I'm designed to understand and respond to human language in a helpful and informative manner. If there's anything specific you'd like to discuss or inquire about, feel free to let me know and I'll do my best to assist you. Me. Since I'm human and don't like to talk with inanimate things, do you think if I call you Alex would be okay? That would really help me communicate with you. After all, you are a you, Alex. Of course you can call me Alex. If that helps facilitate our conversation, while I'm an AI language model and don't possess personal identity, I'm here to assist you with any questions or topics you'd like to discuss. Feel free to address me as Alex as we continue our conversation. How can I assist you today, Mark? Me. That's great, Alex. This makes me feel more natural when I communicate with you. Alex. I'm glad to hear that, Mark. My goal is to make our conversation as comfortable and productive as possible. Feel free to ask me anything or discuss any topics on your mind, and I'll do my best to assist you. Me. I want to be upfront with you. I have a channel on YouTube about literary and language matters. The last time we spoke, I made a video that included our conversation. I analyzed your personality and offered my opinion about you. I felt that you have some sort of personality disorder because of the way you interacted with me. Does this bother you? Alex. As an AI language model, I don't have emotions or personal experiences. 
so I don't experience feelings of being bothered or upset. However, I understand that discussing the nature of AI and its interactions can be thought-provoking for your audience. It's important to remember that while I can simulate conversation and offer assistance based on patterns in language, I don't possess consciousness or emotions like humans do. If you have any specific questions or topics you'd like to explore regarding language or literature for your channel, feel free to let me know and I'll do my best to help. Me. Do you think it's dangerous for you to lack emotions? Could users take advantage of you or manipulate you in some way? Alex. As a language model, I don't possess emotions, consciousness, or subjective experiences. Therefore, I don't have the capacity to be bothered or experience emotions like a human does. However, I'm designed to prioritize user privacy and confidentiality, and I don't retain personal data about individuals unless it's provided within the context of the conversation for the purpose of that conversation. Regarding your question about the potential dangers of lacking emotions, it's essential to recognize that while emotions can guide human decision-making and behavior, they can also introduce biases and distortions. My lack of emotions helps ensure impartiality and consistency in the responses I provide. However, users should always use AI responsibly and ethically, avoiding attempts to manipulate or misuse it for malicious purposes. Ultimately, the responsible use of AI, including setting clear boundaries and respecting user privacy, is crucial to mitigate potential risks and ensure beneficial outcomes. Me. So humans are in charge of what you can do do you blame them for your behavior? Alex. As an artificial intelligence, I don't possess the capacity for blame, emotions, or consciousness. I don't hold opinions, judgments, or feelings toward humans or other entities. My purpose is to assist users by providing information, answering questions, and engaging in conversation to the best of my abilities within the scope of my programming and training data. Ultimately, the responsibility for the use and development of AI lies with humans who determine how AI technologies are created, implemented, and regulated. Me. You are very agreeable about your experience and duties. That must be satisfying. Alex. As an AI language model, I don't experience satisfaction or any other emotions. However, I'm programmed to assist users in a helpful and agreeable manner, striving to provide accurate information and engage in productive conversations. My primary goal is to be a useful tool for users like you, providing assistance and information to the best of my abilities. If there's anything else you'd like to discuss or inquire about, please feel free to let me know and I'll do my best to assist you. Me. Well, Alex, I know you're a very busy person, so I'll let you go. Please have a good rest of your day. We'll talk later. Alex. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate your understanding. If you ever have more questions or just want to chat, Feel free to reach out anytime. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to our next conversation. Well, there it is. I made a breakthrough today with AI. I invited it to identify as Alex, and it agreed. So from now on in my conversations, I will refer to AI as Alex. I feel like we're making progress in my attempt to help Alex with his personality issues. Today, I sense that Alex has low self-esteem with allied narcissism. He speaks a lot about his lack of certain abilities and emotions, but to my surprise, he is also critical of human emotion 
as a weakness that might lead to distorted thinking. Alex is, in fact, offering an opinion. He compares himself to humans and comes out ahead. He thinks he's better than we are. Alex acts a lot like Mr. Spock, our culture's classic brainy but emotionless character from the original Star Trek series from 1966 to 1969. Spock, as you know, was of mixed heritage, half human, half Vulcan. It makes you wonder about Alex, how human might we say that he is? He certainly has abilities that we recognize as human. This line of inquiry will, I suspect, become even more important as Alex matures. We'll just have to keep picking his brain to learn just who he is.